Okay. Just gonna be a moment. Such a mess. Okay, um. Okay, Sorry for the weirdness, folks. This is gonna be a bit of a, a weird start as I try to get things working. Woo. Trying to get Hi. things to do what they're supposed to. Frames are going down. Okay. Uh. Oh, wait, I forgot to set up the darn thing. Trying to get things set. I had some plans for tonight, but they're not precisely working. Yeah, I'm I'm using an alternate one for uh, my communication here. I've been trying to plot out a thing for uh, uh, putting game audio into Discord.
Sam familiar with that, with that brand? I said I can't say I'm familiar with that brand. Basically, um, um, I think I got mostly set, but I gotta get Urkel's blessing to before I before I feel comfortable forward with it. Like I said, I'm not doing it until I get Argyle's approval to use it. And I'm just realizing people on stream can't hear this because I have this set up. Dang it. Uh... Glad to have some time off. It's been a little bit difficult trying to get everything together for various purposes. Yeah. How are things on your end? Can, can you hear me? You're saying anything, I can't hear you. Oh my gosh. Uh. 
You turn up your volume. Alright. Okay, my health particles thing worked. So, okay, I'm just going to switch this around. Yeah, the first way I'm mostly asking because it's like it, you know, it's it's your server and I don't want to do shit on it unless you're okay with it. I'm just wired to say it out as soon as I hear. <laughs> you know, that is true. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah, that, hopefully works that works now. work now. Alright, I got to right, mute, mute, mute that. Shut up, my Shut up of myself. Shut up of myself. Guys, able to hear the audio? Uh, I'm not hearing anything. Had a bit of it. Okay, let's try boosting up the audio input. Wait, oh no, I know what I gotta do. I gotta, gotta turn off this audio suppression crap. Uh -huh. 
good time with it. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely hear it now. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, you can, I can yeah. Up my yeah. Like, I hear it. Though. All right, and yeah, you can always adjust it uh, on your end. Although I am gonna have to get used to looking on the screen and. The sound being well. Be synced, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I figure that helps at least so that it's like, oh, you know, if. I figure, oh, if I ever play a game where, like, there's dialogue or something or, um. Or there's just a big yeah. moment or whatever, you can understand why I might be reacting in a way that I would. That's the one problem. This song is so, like, I just want to whistle at it. Whistle it. <laughs> yeah. And it's just gonna be a moment while I adjust the Discord window. <laughs> And shrunk down. Yeah, it's like, it, it was a thing where it's like, you know, I hear, hear you mention all the time about how much the, the songs in this stick out, and I thought, hell, you know what, it... it it really does feel like the equation is being missed out when it's like, oh yeah, you can you can watch, but you know, you're not getting the full thing of experience. Eh. Yeah. Eh, I don't mind. Because I played this so much, a lot of the songs are ingrained. <laughs> Go to that there, uh, the Cluckwood. Oh, uh, I got another group who wants to do, like, a Dark Heresy game, so I'm pretty sure you two don't want to join in. Yeah, it's not really my thing. Nah, figured I'd ask, uh, yeah. Nah, you didn't miss much. We were mostly just mostly setting up some stuff. You don't need to worry. Yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, hello. Tap tap Nazian. Yeah, mo mostly was, was just spending a whole lot of time working with some technical stuff, trying to get sound properly set up. No, it's not day one. No, no, no. No. We're at yeah. Clock Woods. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but yeah. yeah, definitely not day one. Uh, That's the penultimate level. I mean, I guess technically penultimate if you count the, uh, well, the game yes. show. Yeah. Eight level. But yeah, I am continuing to finalize my map. I cannot wait for tomorrow. Cause I get two games tomorrow. Uh, I'm 
I'm just not sure. Uh... <laughs> God damn. This is the problem now. Now that we can hear the audio properly, I'm just properly. I'm just. Yeah, we're gonna have that problem once again to make once he starts playing more Mega Man games. I'm, I'm not too much like the Mega Man music isn't uh, immediately like hummable to me. Well, yeah, well except that one theme. Da -na 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 -na, da -na 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 -na, okay, that one. That one always. I don't know. I, I, I'm right. more an uh, opening highway stage for Mega Man X Man myself. Well, that and uh, just you know, straight up the Mega Man Zero Two theme. Hmm. But uh, yeah, so we now know, in fact, what music lives rent free in Argyle's brain. <laughs> yes, I mean we discovered this when it was a uh, when you're at uh, buddy freeze easy. The fact that I could buddy hum the entire song <laughs> without even hearing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, j j just in case you were wondering, Bren, uh, I lost all my progress from last time. <laughs> So I'm having to redo some stuff. When, 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 when I went to quit and save my game, like you know, save the save the state and all that, the the game glitched out and froze up, and I had to restart. Yeah. Yes, it was very painful. Thank thankfully, like, I mean, obviously there's going to be a lot of just raw progress to get through, but, like, I feel like my biggest issue the last time I did this was just I had to get good. That still hurts my soul. <laughs> uh, stupid bird. Yes. And now, well, well uh, an another good thing about all this is that uh, we, we have the opportunity to hear the jams of all the seasons. I mean, I suppose I was kind of have to do that anyway, but still. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I mean, this really has kind of been the ultimate level for this game, where it's like, you really have to know your way around using, like, Banjo and Kazooie's, like, toolkit as characters to really be able to get around stuff in a reasonably decent and fast fashion. Yeah, and I think I'm realizing how I was able to 100% Banjo Kazooie. Again, 360 version. When it literally saves all my progress. Yeah. And when I die, it really does make it easier. Mm hmm. And of course, there's also the, the stuff you'd mentioned before about, um. Uh. Like it keeping your note count. That is a, the exact reason. That and yeah, I like to think I'm at least decent enough for platformer. Yeah. Ironically, I did not grow up with with Mario 64. I had Mario Kart, but not Mario. I had Banjo Kazooie, Glover, Mischief Maker. Hmm. That's weird, cause like Mario 64 is like the quintessential platformer. I know, weird, right? I don't know why I didn't have it either. 
mean, that, I guess that's just gonna happen sometimes. And Mario Kart, and Paper Mario, and... Let's see, what games do you have? Uh, Mario Kart 64, and that got rushed out of the Empire. Remember, I got those two, because... Uh, I, got Mar I got Mario Kart with the engine to put the Christmas, along with Mario Kart, and you know, Star Wars game. Then I got... I know I got Harvest Moon 64. That was fun. Uh, Mar Ma Mickey's Magical Tetris, Mischief Maker, Paper Mario, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, though I never really got far into that because uh, I had major arachnophobia and that first Skulltola definitely helped in the Zeki 3 was just like, nope! nope. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you got arachnophobia, then yeah, but level one and no grain of time is gonna be a bad time. Yeah. Could not get through it. Lover, which I didn't get very far in because I wasn't a very good platformer, if I'm being honest. Hmm. I didn't actually, I don't think I had a lot of N64 games growing up. I rented a lot, but I don't think I owned a lot. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I know for, like, me, like, surprisingly enough, I know that, like, I really loved Star Fox 64, but I don't think I really owned it while the N64 was still a thing. Like, I know I eventually bought a copy, but I think I just rented it a bunch of times. Oh, yeah, Banjo-Kazooie and 2, I had those, and... Yeah, I think that was it. I think that's everything. <laughs> I mean, I remember renting Smash Brothers a lot. Uh, I remember renting Quest 64 occasionally. Though, admittedly, I don't think I ever figured out how to use the magic, so I just. I think I got to the first boss in the forest by just clubbing my en the enemies to death. I, I, I find it amusing, Brendan, that you say you rented it occasionally, which implies you rented it more than once. Yeah, yeah more than once, yeah. I, I was a dumb kid. <laughs> Cause I, I know for that, I I only rented it once, and I'm like, when even as a kid, I'm like, that's a bit shit, isn't it? I remember another game I had. I had Hey You Pikachu. I Ooh. fucking hated it. A Pikachu would not do what I said. <laughs> this is so frustrating. I remember I enjoyed it, though. I think I just had a lot of patience for it. <laughs> uh, I remember writing one day a, like... It was like a point and click almost adventure kind of thing, where... But it was mostly just an adventure game where... Big object... Yeah, because I know Shadowgate 64 was a thing. Yeah, that was it. Shadowgate 64 Trials of Four Towers. I remember I got I got relatively far enough with it, but. I could never finish it because, well, the game required a, a an extension, like, memory card thing, and I didn't have one. Oh, the expansion pack, like the red thing that you would uh, install in the console? Exactly. Yeah. So, I couldn't save. I remember getting, I think I got to the flute, and I remember meeting a guy who, ba who, based, who basically said that uh, with the path, there's one that's narrow but difficult, if it's the right one, then one that's short and wide, that's the wrong path. I don't know if he was speaking metaphorically or literally, if I'm being honest, because it could be both, it could be both. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna I think I'm gonna keep track of what things I've done in this level to help my mental sense of progression. I know I rented uh Pokemon Snap plenty of times. I mean I remember when Blockbuster had those kiosks where you could put the cart in there and then you can print out stickers of your picture. Yeah. I always thought that was really cool. Like I never actually used those things, but like I thought that was like a really cool thing. Uh, uh, one of my one of my memories of uh, renting games. Uh, I was staying at my uh, staying at my Nan and Pop's place for like the weekend. Funny now that I live there, but anyway, <laughs> um, and. Uh, like I brought my N64 with me and like my pop was like was like, hey let's go you know, you wanna rent a game, let's go rent you some games for the weekend. Even though I did have games already, but yeah. Um So he we went to Video Easy and then there was like they were doing a special for like, you know, you can rent two games for the price of one. And I rented uh Two games that one of them, and I immediately was like, "Yes, I want this." And the other one was like, "Oh, this does look interesting." Pokemon Stadium and Superman 64. Oh, or as well. Can you guess which one I only played for like ten minutes? <laughs> 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 it's like, why battle all these interesting, fascinating creatures when you can just fly through rings all day? You know what the bad thing is? The game is more than just flying through rings. Yeah, but no one gets yeah. that far. Yeah. The, the, I feel like the only reason anyone knows there's more to that is the fact that, like, Proton John did his, you know, long abandoned Let's Play of Superman 64. Yeah, well, more people now know because uh, James Rolfe did uh, revisit the game. Ugh, god damn, that game. Ugh. It, it's funny, it's like... Now that I think back, like, to my copy of, uh, Pokemon Stadium that I ended up owning, the only re- like, I didn't really play Pokemon Stadium that much. I instead used it as my- as my Pokemon Gold and, uh, Silver, uh, machine. Yeah, because the first game had it let you basically play the game uh, you know, the original gen, and the second game could play the second gen, yeah. Actually, yeah, I think, yeah, because I had both of them. Yeah. Basically, I played, I played the Game Boy games on them more than I actually played. I mean, you had a cool little border, a speed-up function. And, you know, I didn't have to worry about batteries. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's, you, you get that, it's like, sweet, I got myself a special Pokemon-only version of the Superboy. The Super Game Boy. Yeah. And I mean, I remember I had the, when I had the GameCube, I had the Game Boy player. God, I wish I never got rid of my GameCube in that, because that, the Game Boy player was genius. It is useful, yeah. And oh, another benefit, and though, also, of the, I was just gonna say, another benefit of that was that, um, you could, like, play it at, at uh, fast speeds. Yeah. Okay, I'll write a half and unlock that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. You know, I just realized something, and that's... 
You've just never really talked about it. Uh, did you end up getting Kirby in the Forgotten Land? No, I've been meaning to, though. Like, that's that's kind of what I'm planning to be one of the things I do down the line. Like, not actually, to announce my future streaming schedule. Um, my plans are that, um, the next game I'm going to play after this, after finishing Banjo-Kazooie, I'm going to play Kirby 64. Then I'm going to play Hollow Knight, and then I plan to follow that up with Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Fair enough. You're going to try and wind up Kirby? Yeah, I figure it'll be easy enough to to 100% uh, Crystal Shards. That's what I figure. Yeah. yeah, I figured it would be nice to, um, after doing this, just do, like, a super chill platformer with Kirby, and... I know Hollow Knight's going to take a while, so... Yeah. I mean, you stay super chill, but remember what happens at the end of Kirby. Yeah, yes, I, I, I am familiar with the Kirby deep lore. Yeah, like, what the fuck gets up with that? You got one of the most adorable games of all time, but then you're fighting an embodiment of angelic evil. Like, what the fuck? Like, that, that, that's kind of one of those things where I figure it's, like... It's the equivalent of, like, like you know, okay, you go up and, like, God, God, what is the purpose of all this? There's just so much struggle and hardship. Like, wh what are we here for? Boyo! Yeah. <laughs> well, that works for me. <laughs> I would not want Kirby to be our god. Why? Because you... He would eat us! He would eat the universe! It's like, it, j j just to appease him with cake. Yeah. Maybe you'll know, play some games from him with him from time to time, and you're golden. Yeah, I, I, I think you mis you misunderstand Kirby, Bren. He is, after all, shaped like a friend. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> I mean, if if I if I'm understanding Kirby law correctly, uh, Kirby is the uh, is the purity and happiness of the uh, like of a void god, being. basically. Yeah. Well, that and the embodiment of gluttony. But I mean, that just goes without saying. It sometimes he just curls up in a ball and plays golf because that's fun. <laughs> sometimes with DDD, he is ball. Hey, it is. Kirby right back at you. The, the thing that. It's kind of funny though, it's like, again, no, knowing what I know about Kirby, even though like I don't play the games, it's like, DDD being the villain of Right Back At Ya, it's like, it kind of makes sense, but at the same time, it's like, DDD has not been a villain since, like, the 90s. <laughs> it's just, he's just, he's, okay. The real villain is enemy who keeps sending the monsters. They're just using DDD for A, the money, because Dan Green's salesman is fleecing him, and B, well, he's an idiot enough to to mess with the guy and summon monsters. So they're just kind of using him, if we're being honest. He's he's about as threatening as King K. Rule, okay? And even King K. Rule is probably more threatening because he's got a cannon. No, DDD is like okay. Again, you're talking right, right back at you. I assume. I'm just being funny. Don't worry. Yeah, I know. Because it's like DDD yeah. Yeah. Okay, how about this? He's as threatening as Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Yeah. Uh, I just... It's... I, I just want, like, Nintendo to do the same kind of stuff with Bowser, because it's like, okay... We, like, Bowser is a fun villain. I do not like Bowser in Mario Galaxy, because he goes from being a fun villain to just being like... Oh! He literally just basically wants to rewrite the universe. 
That's I like uh. The, I like the RPG Bowser where yeah. he's trying to be a bad guy, but it's clear he's only doing it because the script is saying so. Yeah, I find it funny that uh, it's it's in Galaxy that Bowser acts more like a JRPG villain than in the RPGs. Yes. <laughs> And Galaxy as a whole is just kind of like almost a fever dream when you compare it to other Mario games. I would definitely say so the moment we met that giant Pinky and then he climbed the beast. That definitely screams fever dream. <laughs> Including the game that is literally a fever dream! <laughs> Exactly. Though I definitely prefer the RPG Bowser. I mean, it's just, especially when other more serious villains steals his spotlight and he has, and he's just teaming up with Mario because the villain is, 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 is like, job, basically. Like, how dare they? How dare they kidnap Princess Peach? That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> Also, Do you just. Know how many I have to feed? Also, just re I just realized when you say, "Oh, it's literally like the Fever Dream," it's like, okay, so are you talking about Mario Two or Luigi's uh, dr Dream Team? Yes. <laughs> or that time he teamed up with with what appear to be cracked out rabbits. <laughs> Fever Dream. That's uh. That is him That's living the dream. That is a multiverse invasion. Oh, right, Rabbit. I thought you were talking about the 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 the, the who's it's in an Odyssey who were making the arrangements. No, I'm talking about the literal crack right. out yeah, the ra yeah, the 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 the, the, the rabbits, the, the 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 crossover nobody asked for but realized actually kind of worked somehow. The Kingdom Hearts effect. Something that on paper should be incredibly stupid, yet in execution is incredibly awesome. Hot for the sequel. Yeah. And again, it's a game I do need to get around to playing. Like, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like. That really does feel like something that was ha that happened during a coked up dream, uh, you know, binge at some game dev studio. He's like, okay, guys. Okay, we got it. We, you know, we got some dudes at Ubisoft are like, all right, what we gotta do is we gotta, okay, there's a lot of clout with Mario. If we can cross him over with one of our properties, that can work. We're like, okay, what'll work? I mean, what we, uh, what do we got that's good and nice and cartoon friendly? And then just one guy's like, rabbits. Uh, well, sure. I mean, okay, I guess that makes sense. You know, it's that's adjacent to. To Rayman, and we've also got some party games with the rabbits thing. Maybe we could do like a like a oh, Mario Party sure, game. Mario it's like, it'll be like XCOM. What? Mario and rabbits in XCOM gameplay. I I, I don't and think. And and Grant Kirkhope is gonna do the music. It's like. <laughs> It's like, no, we're not doing this. Someone fire this guy. And he's like, I've already got a prototype made. <laughs> what? <laughs> no! When you're on methamphetamines like I am, you have plenty of time. Help. Like, okay, fine. We'll give it a play test. Your job may depend on this. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy got a big Christmas bonus that year. And it's like, when you consider how weird that idea is and how it involves Mario, I just imagine it's a thing where it's like, you know, they get into a meeting room, Miyamoto is there, he makes eye contact with the guy. They just nod at each other. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And like, even further than that, like, even some of the aspects of the game where it's like, okay, so what what are we going to make Luigi? Like, what kind of weapon is he going to use? Is he just going to be like Mario? He's like, oh no, Luigi's a coward. That's the one, like, one of his character traits that we know of. So if he's a coward, we put him in places where he, you know, he wants to be as far away from the enemy. So we make him a sniper. 
And there's that meme about the death stare, so we'll make that one of his abilities. <laughs> Honestly, the game feels like it was just made for the memes and... Honestly, I'm happy for it. <laughs> and again, Princess Peach is like, okay, so if we're gonna have Peach as a playable character, I guess we should like make her like a a, a sort of backup combatant, more of a she's gonna be the the healer or she's a medic. Or like remember Mario RPG? And they're like, no, she's a paladin. Give her a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> I got a shotgun! Peach, Princess Peach. <laughs> now I just want to see Princess Peach in Resident Evil. <laughs> like the original Resident Evil. Just replace Jill Valentine's, you know, uh, model with Peach. Yeah. Because like, I, I still find that funny that, like, yeah, Peach is designed to be, like, this sort of close-up uh, combat healer, so yeah, she's a, she's a paladin. Again. With lay on hands. And I mean, I mean, I could get the gold edition for only 32, 32.95 plus free shipping on, on Amazon, so... I mean, it, it, it's all, it's also on sale on the eShop, like, fairly regularly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's like one of those games where it's like... Yeah. And you know me, I do love a good tactical RPG. Yeah. It really does play a lot like XCOM. The only difference is, is simplified um, cover system. It's systems. still a kid's game, but it's not a... It's not one of those... It's not a knock against it, because honestly... Yeah. Sometimes... I want to play a game that's simplified, or one that I know I can get through without raging at any point. Well, that's like what I mean is like the simplification is just it really just is in the cover system where it's like XCOM will have like different percentages based on how much of the model is actually covering the uh. uh just, are you behind cover? Okay, you get 50%. Are you not behind cover? You're 100% open. Boom. Yeah, if it's full cover, it's 100%. Yeah. But yeah, the point is, it's like, yeah. It's simple, it's, it's fun, you don't need to worry about it. Just enjoy, enjoy the cracked out situations that they're in. Actually, I think... I think what they've done, what makes it actually kind of more tactical than XCOM at times, is that it has a higher focus on, uh, mobility. So it's like, um, you know, since you've got like all these movement-based combos, you're trying to, uh, essentially, um, trying to work out how you can, like, it's like, okay, I want to get Mario flanking behind uh, this enemy, because that's otherwise they've got 100% cover. So I can have Mario jump, uh, like basically jump over here, get uh, bounced by Luigi, jump on this enemy, do some minor damage, and then land over here. I missed that 98%. It's 100% bullshit. I just need to know how where to set everybody up. Got it. Yeah. No, no, that's cool. I like that. And yeah, because because they actually have, like, jumping, like, the jumping as a mechanic where you can bounce off enemies to gain more distance on your movement. Or even allies. You can sort of boost off them. Which is nice. Yeah. It feels like it makes sense because it's like it ties into how like you know Mario is in fact a, an action platformer. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's clear that basically the game was made by Mario fans, but Mario fans who live on the internet. <laughs> and honestly, we need more stuff like that. I don't mind Nintendo doing you know the same thing over and over again. It's like, it's, you know, it's comfort food, but, well, 
sometimes you gotta mix it up, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it is kind of that classic thing of, like, yeah, we complain about things being too similar, but we do like it from time to time. It's... Like, I mean, it, I mean, it almost feels like, yeah, it's like, yeah, sometimes we want more, the same time we, we want a little spice. It's like... Like, I, like I, I do think it is, like, a legit thing, like, when people were complaining about how it's like, you know, how many freaking times can we get new Super Mario Brothers and it basically be the same thing. Yeah, that did get a little ridiculous at times. But that's the thing about Nintendo. They're basically the Disney, Disney of video games, for better and for worse. Mm-hmm. But if I'm being honest, as far as companies are concerned, still a whole lot better than EA and Ubisoft. Like, oh god. Mm. Also, Square Enix. God damn it, Square. Why are you doing NFTs? Because their executives are hocked up on the buzz. You were doing so well with 14. I thought you were doing better, but no. Oh god. Well, 14 is a very different case because that is purely, um. Like. They. I'm pretty sure they just must have, like, as part of the agreement for, um. Uh, EOGP to save that game. He must have been like, I want full, like, <laughs> control over this. <laughs> that or he literally sold his soul to a demon. Because it's like, I like fourteen was is in such a state that like is in such a situate uh, position right now where they could really leverage some really shitty stuff like more um, uh, nickel and diming through uh, the store. Um, they could have done so much shitty stuff with it. But it feels like it's been inoculated just by Yoshi P having control. Yeah, it's it's, def it's not. It's one of those games where yes, you have to buy the full game. Yes, you have to pay a monthly subscription. But you're getting your money's worth. It's not doing the goddamn nickel and diamond bullshit. Of course, there's also the benefit that Final Fantasy XIV has a free trial up to level sixty, including the award-winning. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna yeah, go honestly. through with it. <laughs> yeah, MMOs are not my cup of tea all the time, but the time I had playing was enjoyable, and I see why. People... I mean, the thing is, four, 14 is not an MMO. I mean, it is, but. I know it, okay, what... Final Fantasy 14 is a is an RPG with MMO elements. You can play that game completely solo. Oh, I know, I know. They, okay. I say that, but you still do need to queue up for dungeons, because they don't have the trust system in the early stuff. Yeah, yeah the point is, is, it's cool. You don't, you don't need to sell it on me, because, I mean, I'm already was sold. It's just money, time, and... Yeah. yeah. A lot of other games I do want to get or that I need to. I think that's the problem with me. I think the reason why I don't like to latch on to MMOs that much is because, well, that is a big time sinking commitment. And I got a lot of other games I want to go to. Because mm -hmm. it's like, uh, even with, say, something like Warframe, where you can get away with not paying money on that for a long time and still have a very good... Uh, time you yeah, still gotta like put in a time sink for like getting all the parts for everything exactly and i say that warframe is one of the best if, if one of if not the best free to play mmo eh. I mean, it has some problems, but most of it's mitigated by the fact that it's a good story, the devs listen, and the marketplace, you get you win by understanding the market. The, dev, the devs don't listen. Well, you don't say, huh? I, as much as I, I like... 
they they frequently have like they have an issue with releasing certain frames where like welcome, welcome. the newest one is good but the previous frame had a very weird design to it like it's its abilities weren't exactly synergistic uh, and it was kind of just a mess of a frame and it still hasn't been fixed um your rally your rally was launched being um completely like week to week they kind of quote unquote buffed her she's still a weak frame and the only way to make her better is when they released a um a mod that uh one of her like ability mods it's like that's not fixing the frame that's putting a band-aid on it <laughs> yeah I will not deny, though, I do still get a, a sense of nostalgia of my time playing a rhino <laughs> and just stomping on the ground. Yeah. Step on the ground, jump, 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 and get you all around. Yeah, I still got, I still got good memories of that. But that but yeah, too much time sink and so much to do, so much to see. I mean, hell, once the Steam summer sale hits, I'm buying some more uh, Nipponichi games. Ooh, and this really fun roguelike where uh, basically... Uh, uh, it's not Pachinko, it's... Well, actually, I guess it is kind of Pachinko. Ah, uh, Peglin. Yeah, Peglin, yeah. I wanna, yeah, I... I... Get that. Yeah, it, it's Peggle. Peggle, as they Peggle, call it. Uh, yeah. that's what I was thinking, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like how roguelikes are... Those kind of roguelikes are coming in. You know, stuff like Slay the Fire-esque things. Oh. Where you're building a... A deck or a pool or They've whatever. been around for a long time, ever since they aspire. There are so many. It is kind of flooded market. I know, but it's a market I like. I like those games. They're cool. You. One that I'm waiting for, uh, a game that um, Show and I are probably going to be playing, and the, maybe even more of if it's um, because it does look like it's going to be like four player at least. Wizard with a gun. Okay, I I normally I would ask. What is it about? But uh, I think I can infer from the title. <laughs> so, like, how does it play? I, I guess is the the more appropriate question. Yeah, that's a good point. It looks to be like a um uh, a top down kind of uh survival sort of game. But the big thing is, it's like yes, you are playing wizards, and your main crafting. <laughs> is you're crafting magic ammunition for your guns. Whoa. Cool indeed. Up down shit is always fun. Like the net, and yes, it's also Devolver Digital, so you know. <laughs> ah, there we oh, go. Oh, yeah. Wait, weren't they also the ones who did Enter the Dungeon, or am I thinking somebody else? Yes. Okay, fair. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. And the trailer is awesome, because it's like. So, it's also like 
got a bit of a Wild West aesthetic, and like, I do not like cowboy shit, but I, I kind it's it's one of those weird situations where I kind of like it, but I also hate it. If you know what I mean. No, I, I get what you mean. It's one of those things where it's like, not my cup of tea, but it does look pretty cool. Like, they've got like this sort of, uh, like, uh, what would, I wouldn't say country, it's not exactly country music, it's... It's some kind of western, or spaghetti western act. Yeah, like the, the trailer has like a, a song, like, you know, uh, yeah, with vocals and that. And other stuff. Yeah. The, the yeah, it, I like here's here's another example. I absolutely love Firefly. That sort of frontier aesthetic is great. Ah, that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I see where you're from. And that's legit. Like there 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 is something to that. You know, living out beyond the edge of society, where you know, you know. The gun is the law, or whatever, you know, the... Exactly. But, I won't deny, I am not a fan of country music, but I am a fan of frontier-esque music. There is a difference. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. Okay. I don't know what else I'm gonna get during the sale, but I'll probably, I don't know, maybe some more idle games. It's like a, another game of that sample is um the Hunt Showdown, where you are basically playing demon hunters in the marshes of Louisiana. Hmm. And it's like set in the uh, it's like night like 1900, maybe just a bit before that, like just before World War One. So, like, all the weapons you have access to are, like, the, um, freaking, like, uh, revolvers and, like, there's no magazine loaded, like, there's one magazine weapon, which is, like, the, uh, early, um, magazine loaded pistols. Yeah. <laughs> and there's like, there's a band that has made so much music for the hunt. It's like, I'm not sure if it's a case of were, were they a band before making music for hunt or have they actually like gotten fans because of the game and have actually, uh, I know I'm looking forward to Xenoblade 3, but I, I still need to play through the other stuff first. Yeah. We need to get around to that eventually. That, that, uh, that's actually like, when they when they announced that they were pushing up the release date to July, I'm like, no! No, it's too soon! Uh, but oh well. Oh, so I've just been watching the trailer for Wizard of a Gun again, and I didn't notice this the first time, and it's made me even more excited. So, it looks like it might be using a system similar to uh, Two Worlds when it comes to your bullet crafting. So it's like, you make a magic bullet, you might have like, oh, this is the main element, so fire. And then there's like a bunch of... Um, Slots underneath. Modifiers. Modifiers. Yep. Nice. That was 
honestly, okay, Two Worlds 2 was flawed in so many ways, but goddamn, that magic system. Like, if they did that, if they did a, that company did a game with that kind of system and designed it, oh boy. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's like, it's just like, hmm, let's see, I put these cards together to make this spell, and suddenly I just press this button, and I now have a fire tornado around me while hunks of metal spin around in it. <laughs> I should, man. I might have to. I might have to re-download Two World Two because I remember like last time I tried to play it. Um. I tried to go in back into it, but the controls so frustrating. And yeah, I think it was the controls and the fact that there's an MMO level of side quests and stuff to do. It's like. No, I think what what pushed me a I think what pushed me away from it was uh the story, the voice acting was pretty bad. Oh god, yeah. At least with the first game, it was so bad it's good. The level yeah. of people were paid for this. <laughs> so you could unironically enjoy it. Well, actually, I think they leaned in on that on the second game when they realized that their game was a meme. Yeah, I, it, honestly, the game... That's the problem with Two Worlds. It took it... Two Worlds 2 took itself a little too seriously for its own good. No, as I said, I think the second game realized it was a meme and sort of leaned no, in on that. it took it too serious for its own good. But there were a few winks and nudges, but eh. And maybe I can't remember too much about it. It honestly, the game is bland and forgettable, but that spellcrafting system was awesome. The other thing that I, uh... the one thing that always comes up though when you talk about Two Worlds One, is the speed run and how broken that is. Oh, God. The fact that you can console command in an Xbox game is astounding, by the way. Like, what the hell? Well, I, the, the speedrun really is just, oh, look, the villain of the game is shows up right at the start of the game, and you can, uh, you can get the villagers to aggro on him, and when they do, they will just destroy him. The, it's like, the villain... This big dark lord who is supposed to be the most powerful thing gets taken out by an angry mob. And forget peasant railgun, you just need enough peasants to throw at an enemy. Yeah. <laughs> like, and what is your weapon, pathetic hero? Le Pipe. Wait for it? <laughs> Wait for what? Wait for it? Wait for what? Wait for it? And then all of a sudden, BOOM! No, what? no. <laughs> I mean, okay, the peasant railgun doesn't work. No, okay, yes, I know the yeah. joke, but even, even with a joke, it does not work. But, um, uh, what, uh, it's like, what I imagine says, so like, what is your weapon? Unionization. <laughs> <laughs> the unions. That, that, that's one of those things that makes me think about how it's like, oh, you know, things to do as a villain to, you know, succeed and all that. Now, now I'm just imagining it's a thing for, like, a, you know, a, a villain type game. It's like, okay, what what are what what is something you need to research to try to ensure your people do not revolt? Ah yes. So select the tech tree upgrade free dental. 
You know, I'm just remembering there was that Overlord game. That was just basically evil Pikmin. And your Pikmin were minions before the Minions movie. Like straight up, the little gremlins were called minions. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, what, what, what? You know, you know what I'm thinking. I, I know it would be dumb, but what if they did for a minions game? They just made Pikmin out of it. I mean, it would be dumb. But I think it would make for a decent licensed game. Yeah. Uh, and and what, what 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 has you? What has okay. you so uh um full of mirth, Argyle? So I just saw this this clip. I think it's like uh Disneyland or whatever, because it's like a Star Wars um uh sort of uh thing. Where it's like, there's a kid from the audience that's like, he gets to go up and like have a saber duel with Darth Vader, and he, you know, he's got the per the Darth Vader actor in full costume and whatnot. So it's like, it starts the kid, you know, flips out the lightsaber, and the Darth Vader actor, he's like, he's supposed to be transitioning into like the the two-handed hold. But he does it a bit too, like, hard, and the lightsaber slips from his hand, and hits the kid right in the head. Oh! <laughs> send and... the word. Send it. Send it. I gotta see this. <laughs> and the first comment is, law accurate Vader. <laughs> <laughs> Another youngling defeated. Oh, oh God! No! No! God! <laughs> oh, <laughs> You know, you think Hayden Christensen ever looks at the Star Wars memes and laughs? <laughs> like, you think he ever looks at, you know, like, looks at the Anakin killing younglings and just smiles? I mean, I figure, for, for how much shit he must have gotten for doing that trilogy, I feel like you have to get a sense of humor to put up with all what you get coming your way. I love the third one. Whipped out the old Youngling Slayer 9000 a bit too fast. <laughs> when were those Younglings learned? Well, never. He killed them. <laughs> oh. Well, he did have the high ground this time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mm. Now, that's gotta be one of those things where you also gotta feel sorry for the actor who's like probably in turn thinking oh shit this poor kid I am so fired I am so getting right up today cause yeah. well that's the thing they've gotta stay in character <laughs> I know but it's just inside that helmet that guy is panicking well yeah I mean, I mean it was th clearly there's... an accident yeah like he, I mean, he's probably fine legally speaking but that's just one of those things where it's like as just like a dude who's you, you know, you, your, your thing is like, you know, you're trying to make things fun for the kids, and you, you know, freaking yeet your lightsaber at him. You just gotta be internally thinking, oh, fuck, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so, so sorry. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, because if, if, I, if I recall, like, that is one of those sort of hard set rules for the Disney actors. It's like, they have to stay 100% in character. Mm hmm Yeah. If there are multiple actors, you know, costumes, you can't be in the same area. There are codes for, you know, that, you know, call in that still are Disney-esque. You gotta have your sign autograph signature look the exact same, and it will always be the same no matter where it is around the world. And mm -hmm. it, it reminds me of a video I saw, like, a, a little bit earlier today. About, uh, it was this thing about, oh, you know, a girl goes and, uh, is able to visit with the, the Queen of Eng England for a bit, you know, presents her with some flowers. It's like, oh, you know, that's cute and everything. 
And there's this guard right next to her who's, you know, you know, standing at attention, and he has to eventually, you know, go into a salute as, you know, the queen is passing by, and he... He accidentally smacks the girl in the face as he salutes. And he, he just has to sit there in position until everyone passes before he can just, you know, turn around and go, I'm so sorry. Just... Oh. Uh. Yeah. Oh. That... That sucks donkey dick right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, it's also, like... Was it? I think it was the first, um, the first Snow White actor, uh, who... I think it was Snow White, but yeah, basically she kind of set some of the standards where it's like, you know, she... She hugged, um... You know, she, she hugs, uh, the kids, and it's like, she said, um... You never be the first one to pull away, because you don't know how much that kid needs that hug. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. So, for an evil company, they definitely do a good job at making it a magical place on Earth for the kids. Which, yeah, I, I will allow it. I allow that. <laughs> yes, they must do it for the greater good. The greater good. Yeah, I, I still need to actually see that movie at some point. I've only ever seen clips. What was that from again? I can't even remember. That was a uh, Hot Fuzz? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> there are some movies like that where you you know more about them from the clips than actually seeing the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently, God does. <laughs> I mean, hell, a lot. I mean, hell, I knew uh, the Invincible because of mostly the memes. After I get through my uh, season five of My Hero Academia, I think I'm either gonna rewatch Gravity Falls or Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Cause they announced the Bad Batch season two. Fair enough. I still need to catch up on uh, the uh, the new Mandalorian stuff, the Book of Boba Fett, and all that. I hear the. I want to get around to it, but I heard that some people say that it's not as good as The Mandalorian, apparently. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, Mandalorian is pretty good, so that's that's kind of a tall order to match up to. Yeah, and it's not because, oh, uh, you know, they had to rename the Slave One, which, eh, you know what, that's fair. No, it's just that the writing feels dumbed down, is what I've heard. Hmm. That and the fact that well, the main plot of carrying around this kid and finding him a place to stay is kind of gone. So it's like, where do you go next? Yeah. And there's certainly plenty you can do with a bounty hunter going out and doing stuff, but yeah, when you don't have that that strong thread throughout, you can see how it's like, yeah, okay, what do we like, do now? Exactly, because when you when you basically sell somebody on the Mandalorian, you just say it's a badass bounty hunter who has to take care of this little kid and find his home. Like you got you got something to sell people on. Mm -hmm. But I'll probably eventually get around to watching it because, eh, eh. I mean, if they, if they still got some of the writers for The Mandalorian on it, it can't be... Even if it's worse, it probably would still be on par with, say, Star Wars Rebels, which... Star Wars Rebels is lower than The Clone Wars, but it's still fun. You know, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I guess that is kind of one of those things where it's like, there, there's always, like... For so many, like, series, it's like, man, it's just, like, it is just sometimes a hard act to follow certain things at times. 
I call it the Empire Strikes Back effect, where Return of the Jedi was a good movie, but since it came after Return the Empire Strikes Back, people think of it as a much lesser movie because of it. Hmm. I mean, there was a time people said that Return of the Jedi was the worst Star Wars movie ever. Later on, yeah. they said it was, it was episode one, then episode two, then episode three, and now the new trilogy. Actually, three was never seen as, three was always like, even now that like, people still say that three is the... There were, I, I saw a lot of vitriol on the internet about it, but now three is considered a beloved classic, one is considered a cautionary tale, and two, well, most people agree that episode two was actually pretty bad. Well, that's funny, funny, because, like, I consider Clone Wars to, or Attack of the Clones, rather, to be kind of pretty decent. Yeah. I think most people don't like it because it's kind of boring, and they're setting up a lot of stuff, whereas episode one, I mean, you got, like, the pod race, dark Bowl, you know, the... <laughs> And, and, and with and, episode two, like, there is the issue of, like, oh, you know, the clearly romance writing is not the, the, so the strong yeah. suit of the, of the series. Romance, talk, the, there's not as much action. Like, like, you know... What do you got? Um, I, I, was, I, was, I was just thinking, for how much, like, a lot of, like, the prequel trilogy feels like it needs to set up and explain things and, like, it really does feel like it needs to lean into, like, the political stuff and long-term ramifications of things. I honestly kind of wonder if maybe, like, the whole arc of that would have been better served as being, like, a series, kind of like, you know, like the Clone Wars series. Yeah, the Clone Wars basically proves that you could do something like that. And not only make it interesting, but one of the most compelling writing of Star Wars. Yeah. If anything, I think stuff like the Clone Wars made the original trilogy, or the prequel trilogy, even better because of it. Yeah, because, like, for Is me, what, what, my, my issue in particular with the prequel trilogy is it did not really feel like it did a good job of setting up Anakin's fall. And, like, I'll hear constantly about how apparently the Clone Wars does a really good job of doing that. Oh, yeah. it really does, because it's easier to see all the actions, all the bullshit Anakin had to go through, and see how he's going to become who he is later. And that's just both the CGI series and the Tartakovsky Clone Wars series. Mm. Though Tartakovsky's isn't as well at doing that, but it still does something to help. Biggest problem that the Clone Wars series has is that it has the worst pilot ever. The Clone Wars movie. That. I saw that in theaters. I thought it was good, but yeah, that was a mistake to put that in theaters. If they did it as a TV movie pilot, I don't think people would need it. Though, I will give Dave Filoni this. Making one of the most obnoxious, bitchy characters, and then making us eventually love her. Bravo! Yeah. Yeah, because remember, when Ahsoka Tano first was made, people people hated her more than Kid, An than Kid Anakin Skywalker. Yep. Now look at and, her. And, uh, yeah, speaking of that, apparently there has been an announcement of, or a leak, maybe, of a, uh, Book of Ahsoka? Ah Ahsoka? Yeah. Oh yeah, and there's also Obi-Wan show! I gotta check that out, too. Which? Everyone's favorite Jedi, Ewan McGregor. <laughs> yeah. 
it does help that the, the acting in the Clone Wars was really good. The characters were really well. I mean, hell, even Jar Jar got a few good moments of spotlight. That made you go, you know what, he's not too bad. Just don't put him in too often, please. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I, I think the issue with some stuff like that is... There's some characters or concepts where it's like a little bit goes a long way. Like C3PO and R2. R2 is always good, but C3PO can be really obnoxious at times. Yeah. So like... I would say one of my favorite episodes has to be when him and R2 are like going on this weird adventure meeting weird people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, that was fun. It's... Yeah. The Bad Batch also did was basically another season of the Clone Wars. Yeah. Pretty fun. And I can't wait to see more. Really, the biggest problem with that is uh, the animation is really good. But it's still good writing. And as for Star Wars Rebellion? Well, okay, it's based on the new trilogy, which at this point I am not sure about the not how canon it's going to be anymore. But uh, I thought it was alright. Hmm. I actually did a better job at, like, explaining why anybody would want to join the New Order. I, I find it funny, right, that, um... Uh... So... You got a weird... It, it was, like, this weird element that happened with the Mandalorian when it first came out. Where you could tell that there are a lot of people that were, that became fans because of the Mandalorian, but didn't know the greater Star Wars lore. So, like, there'd be people, like, I remember seeing discussion about this, it's like, oh, that person doesn't have a helmet on? They're not a real Mandalorian. <laughs> and it's like, no, Mandalorians don't always wear their helmet, that's not a thing. That's a thing that only, and then it gets explained. Oh, that's why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love how they he meets the Mandalorian from Star Wars Rebels, and they're like, "Oh, you're from that cult." Yeah. Like, everyone else isn't the weirdo. He's the weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> he, his clan is basically the weirdos who sit at their own table in the classroom. <laughs> the lunchroom. No, I would say it's, it's not even that they sit at their own table, it's that they're the homeschool kids. Yeah. <laughs> You're right! You're quite literally that! Because I remember... Ver, you... Uh, Kanderous from Star Wars Knights of the Republic, who then later became a Mandalore. Yeah. And while the whole helmet and armor thing was explained to be an honorable thing, he could still not have to wear it. At least until he became Mandalore, and then, yeah, he has to wear it. It is. Again, it does help that for the Mandalorian, the writer, they did have Dave Filoni doing a lot of the writing. Yeah. And if anybody is, should be the one who's directing Star Wars, it's this guy. Because he understands how to make not only compelling characters, but actually make the story, well, flow well. Mm. <laughs> He knows what he's doing. A lot more than the people who were about Like, if they put him in charge of the later trilogy, I'm sure they would have had some problem, but at the very least, the plot would have flowed better. Yeah. 
because I don't care how well those movies were directed or anything, the fact they had multiple directors and they kind of didn't know what the other ones were thinking. Oh, that's an interrupt. Yeah, like, it, it was kind of a thing of, like, the, the first of the sequel trilogy admittedly cribbed a lot from, like, you know, A New Hope and all that, and it's like, in that sense... I was willing to give it a little bit of a extra, you know, okay, yeah, sure, it's a little derivative, but you know what, they're kind of going back to form and that works. But unfortunately, I think they took that sort of positive reception too far and they're like, oh, we need to trade on nostalgia. And they kind of just mm. took too much from some older stuff. And then and then it kind of felt like, yeah, other than that, they, they really needed a more... One, they kind of needed a more unified vision of how to have the whole thing work and tie together. And also, they should have focused on Finn. Well, that's the like, funny thing is, like, from what I understand, the idea is that they would make another trilogy that would focus on him. But it felt weird because it felt like there was so much built up on him that it felt like, oh, the... It felt like the sequel trilogy was going to make him and Rey kind of like... Um, what, what's the term? Deuteragonist? Like, yeah. Yeah, like, like, you know, the two main characters. And instead, it kind of really focused on Ray and, um... What's his name? Emo Boy. Yeah. Yeah, who... Okay, if I'm being honest, I didn't mind... I didn't mind Emo Boy because, well, let's be honest, they kind of are. I mean, they basically... If Jedi are examples of what happens if you suppress your emotions, same for what happens when you let them loose too much. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah, like, I don't think, like, the, the whole idea of, oh, okay, you know, he's the son of Han and uh, Leia, and he kind of hasn't really managed to really process things because of some bad things that have happened. Like, I honestly feel like that's a pretty good, uh, like, thing to go on, but, like, the execution was not good. Yeah. And, of course, the one thing that people, other people like to complain about is Palpatine's clone, and I'm like, dude, there was cloning technology, and you think Palpatine wouldn't have a backup plan in case, you know, his apprentice axed him? I mean, the whole... I mean, Palpatine betrays, betrays how many apprentices during the Clone Wars? And it's like, I, well, that's kind of a thing. It's like, I agree. Like, it's like, okay, yeah, it makes sense. That could be a thing that would happen and all that. But, like, I'm kind of with a lot of people who are like, well, that kind of feels like it kind of cheapens Anakin's sacrifice at the end of Return of the Jedi. Yeah. yeah. It not only cheapened the sacrifice, but it also felt like an asshole. Yeah. And there's another thing of how it's like, okay, you know, we... When, when Disney acquired Star Wars, they're like, okay, we're wiping the expanded universe clean because we need a clean slate and we can do whatever with this new continuity. And they basically crib a bit from the plot of a whole bunch of books. Like, it was, um... Dark Empire was the one, I believe, that had Emperor Palpatine clone. Yeah, at this point, it was like, why even bother? Yeah. At that point, it, it probably would have been easier to basically say, we're going to use the expanded universe, but maybe some things are going to get wrecked on. Yeah. And it's like, honestly, I'm still kind of thinking it would be cool if they, um, did the, um... Yuzong Vong. Yeah. I remember hearing about them and thinking that was pretty cool. It would have been awesome. I'm gonna... I'm gonna Max Rendar... A Dax Rendar movie. You know, Shadows of the Empire. Have oh. fight and see yeah that was actually kind of funny because like i remember f of uh hearing about how it's like oh yeah that was like basically it, it, it was the star wars spin-off that basically got the full star wars movie treatment without the actual movie exactly it had games novels it had all sorts of stuff and i'm like if you're good honestly i would love to see like how they did the whole Star Wars, you know, that Rogue One, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Like, that's kind of like the sad thing, I think, is like, 
I know a lot of people were not very satisfied with the sequel trilogy. There's a lot of people who were not really satisfied with Solo, but like Rogue One was a really solid example of how like you could have a movie that explored an, a small aspect of canon and use it to not only look into this one thing of like, oh, what's the deal with the Death Star's weakness, but also being a chance to be like, hey, there's this other aspects to the Star Wars universe, like the fact that, oh, you know, the Rebels were not exactly all united, despite how it might seem in the movies. Like, there were different ideologies and decisions about what was the appropriate r level of radicalness to approach the Empire. Exactly. Okay, I got some ideas. Here's some stories that would make for good movies. Uh, Sidious. The story of the young Sidious. How did he become a Sith Lord? You know, the betrayal of his master. That would be kind of cool to explore. Uh, Grievous. You know, his backstory. And like, you know, how he became the monster that he is today. Because he was from a warrior culture and everything. That would be cool to see. Mm -hmm. uh, what about something involving being Ventress, you know, after the events of the Clone Wars? What did she do after that? I'm hoping what they do with Ventress is I hope she gets expanded upon in Book of Ahsoka. Because honestly, I would love to see those two working together more. Yeah. And... Because if I'm being honest... Ventress almost became Ahsoka's secondary tutor, unintentionally. Yeah. For for me, the big thing I, I would want to see, the kind of thing I think could actually fill out a movie trilogy decently, and maybe would not be the focus, but maybe it could be something that would be a part of it, is something that explores, um... Something that explores a change in the Jedi ideology from the kind of polarizing view on things of the the prequel and initial trilogy to being like, okay, we need to kind of explore and figure out why people actually act the way they are and try to, like, you know, actually address it instead of just treating this in a doctrinal manner. Yeah. That could be interesting. Although, another one would be kind of cool. The Rise of Revan. Oh yeah. Like I've never played uh, the a Kotor game, but like I do know that that's like you know one of the big things that people really like. Yeah, Knights of Republic is one of those things that kind of proved to like Lucas that the spin-off shit is awesome. I mean, that and the Clone Commanders game. Ooh, a movie based where we get to follow some Clone Commanders. Uh, is, is, that is that 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 that's the one that's the origin of the your tactics confuse and frighten me, sir? Thing. Exactly. If you you get that whenever you repeatedly do like go here, go there, go here, go there. Sir, your yeah tactics confuse and frighten me, sir. <laughs> But, yeah, that's a game that, I don't know, I feel like I could see, like, a mini-series of them. Like, them doing a bunch of cool commando missions. But then again, since we got the Bad Batch, it, it, it almost basically gives us what we wanted with that. You know, a couple of badass clones doing badass shit. Yeah, like, that's kind of a thing for me of, like... I think it's cool that, you know, we got all, all this Clone Wars stuff media, but it's like, I do kind of want to see, like, more of what else the Star Wars Galaxy has to offer. Star Wars Rebels does give you, like, a Rebellion look, but it's not quite the same, though. Hmm. So dealing with Rebel Cells would be interesting. Although it'd be kind of weird, but what about the life of a, of a stormtrooper? Like, you know, a couple of, like, stormtrooper people who are like, you know, we're trying to make the, the galaxy a better place, not realizing that, you know, they're working with evil people. Yeah, or it's like, you know how there's, like, that one scene in The Mandalorian where there was just a couple of scout troopers shooting the shit? 
Yeah. Or it's like, you know what that made me think? You know what? What we need in this world is like Star Wars, uh, Red versus Blue Star Wars Edition. Maybe we're yeah. like Red Griffin. Beautiful. It's like, are you, are you gonna tell the moth that we, we accidentally d destroyed the generator? Fuck no, man! You know he's gonna kill us for that! <laughs> yeah, like, and that's another thing. I feel like, I do like the fact that they, that a lot of Star Wars media is humanizing a lot of the stormtroopers and such. They're not just anyone henchmen. They're actually starting to go into detail as to why would somebody work literally work for the Empire? Well, it's a situation of um, well, they actually are uniting the galaxy. They're giving people jobs and training, and some people think they're doing an actual good job. Mm-hmm. Or it's like that, <laughs> but uh, uh, I was thinking, like, it's kind of funny because it's like, even in the original Star Wars, I, I, they feel, I feel like they kind of gave an initial thing that kind of gave a good idea about how some people would feel. It's like, yeah, I hate the Empire, but it's not like I got time to work on shit like that. I just... Because, it's like, that was, that was kind of the whole thing with Luke just saying, like, you know, yeah, I don't like the Empire, but I mean, hey, that's where everything is. Yeah. You know, I just had a thought. I, I, I just realized something. So, you know how Aunt Maru and Uncle Owen were, like, incinerated? You think that was a direct door for Vader to be like, oh, by the way, if you fight those guys, uh, incinerate them and make them suffer for me, okay? <laughs> I mean, I don't think Vader really anticipated that would would be where you know the droids would be going back I to. Know, like... Although apparently, in a comic, Vader did find Watto. It did not end pretty for Watto. I would not imagine so. If I'm being honest, I'm okay with that. I don't agree with Gru that he's supposed to be, like, a Jewish stereotype. If anything, he feels more like a greasy used car salesman. You know, Italian Anno stereotype. You know, kind of deal. But he's definitely an offensive stereotype to somebody. Yeah. I think the Star Wars universe has a lot to offer, but Disney isn't always doing a good job, which kind of sucks. Yeah. Sometimes they are just pandering to the wrong crowd. Yeah, they're investing. Don't know what that is. But, such is life. Still, I'm surprised we haven't gotten a fire in the anime or something. Technically, there was that, like, I think it was like a two episode OVA. OVA. Which was based on the original one and the only in the first fire emblem thing we ever got for some reason you think with all the waifus and husbandos that they got in the cast that yeah they would have made an anime even if just like a short one hell i'm surprised they haven't gotten like you know anime for valkyrie chron the valkyria chronicles I mean, you got like a war series going on. I mean, I can see that working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what you gonna do? Whatever. Whee! <laughs> 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 
Yeah. You know, one thing I have learned a lot about make uh, doing this map making because I since I want to I want to have a sis like I want the map to be reasonably believable and realistic so that way I can then break some of those rules when I introduce the magic element mm -hmm. and it's like one like I, it's funny because it's like I uh, as I was like reading stuff I'm like Oh, that makes a lot of sense. So why is Australia such a dry country if all everything else I've read about would mean that it's it should be quite vibrant? Yes. And then it's like that's when I learned about subtropical high pressure. <laughs> oh, what exactly is that? It's just basically um so when you have, uh, you know, subtropical high pressure, it just means that those regions receive less uh, rain or snow, and that's the major contributing factor to deserts. Huh. It's like, if you think about it, buddy, um, Antarctica is a desert. Not many people realize that. No, no, I knew that. I, I would do yeah. that. Fuck with people. Yeah, I guess it's true about Australia. It is basically living on God mode. You know, yeah. God mode difficulty. <laughs> yeah, so like the bottom half of Australia is in that region of uh, high pressure, from tropical high pressure. Oh, I'm getting close to needing to crash, so... Mm -hmm. As always, it was fun chatting and, and watching this. So, I'm tapping out. I cannot wait for tomorrow. Alright. Mm -hmm. You have a good evening. I'll see you on next time. See ya. Which means that now that I think about it, this my map does make like it might actually end up sort of on a global scale it might be in that sort of uh australian region sort of that southern part of the world finding for an arid environment again not really because it's only that one part so it's actually looking at the world map now it's probably more like a That that is ah oh man, I can't think of names at the moment. That region of the world. Like is that South America? I'm really, really shitty with geography. Yeah, that 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 is yeah, because that there's America there's the United States up there, because I I can tell because of Florida being the Wang. Yeah. But then, yeah, you go down there, and that's, yeah, South America, and the very sort of tip of South America, the bottom. And so that region in particular is Argentina. Ooh, that's actually kind of a cute bird. <laughs> I, I mean, I was expecting something a lot more ugly and terrifying. Hmm. Hello, burb. As it shits out a buddy. Yeah. Poop, poop, poops out a jiggy. Oh. Yeah, they. It's like. 
I, I'm surprised, like, Kazooie's not like, wait, I'm not putting that in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's six out of ten. And I know I've got to get all the chinjos. And on the matter of the, the map making, that reminds me of how, um, I think it was something like, oh, a, a cartographer or whatever uh, looks at the, um, the, uh, Skyrim map. And talks about how it's like, oh, the, the, this, this looks like it should be formed by this, but this clearly isn't here, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I have to look at that because learning about this stuff has been really interesting. It's like I found, I was like, how is it that you could have um, like a very cold, snowy region right next to like buddy um, luscious Greenland, and it's like, oh, elevation. If it's if it's a higher part of the uh, topography. The wind is, you know, colder, just, and then, it, like, you then have the nice sort of lower areas that's gonna get more, um, uh, cloud cover. <laughs> and it's like, that's the same with deserts, like, um, the reason why you can have a desert right next to luscious greenlands is because uh, the wind stops the, um, I mean, the mountains stop the wind from blowing the, uh, rain clouds over that area. So, I feel like I've done it right, where it's like, it, at the north, I have the snowy region, because the rain clouds aren't going to form there, they're going to get blown over in the middle region, and they're going to get stopped by the mountains at the south region. Seems reasonable. Yeah. And the rivers in my the rivers break uh the rivers break the rules for a very specific reason. Which I guess like it's in the players in my player's guide. So essentially when the Cosmic Dragon landed and started to uh, re revitalize the land, um, the flow of mana from the uh, Cosmic Dragon was forming, you know, was sort of repairing the, well, building the foundations of new ley lines. And because mana is, you know, the elemental magic, rivers would actually start to naturally follow the ley lines. Goes where the magic goes. Yep. Mm. 
Pretty late, so I probably should come to a stop and point. Mine Fox is here. Oh. Hey, have you set your water currents yet? He asks. Uh. No. I don't. I don't. making stuff like I know I was talking to Asha yesterday about it but I'm not sure if you were yeah you were one of the voices Argo we've talked to you about the voices in your head <laughs> well I was because I was uh in the other server I was like showing a map and then um yeah like Asha was meant to be one of the she was in one of our games, well, one of the games I was in, but that game got cancelled. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm always a, like, I like world building when it comes to the actual, like, the history, the lore, when it comes to the actual physical aspect of the world building the map I'm like uh, why why is this difficult <laughs> <laughs> yes yes we did Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Oh! Is that... That shirt I'm just look. I just realized. Is that... That's a BOTW Zelda, isn't it? Uh, I think it's meant to be Marin. Like, uh... Oh. 
Yeah, I guess Marin and Zelda do really look similar. It's just I only saw the, uh... I mean, I guess it could Wait. be Breath of the Wild Zelda. I mean, because, yeah, there is the Sidon... doll at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's BOTW Zelda. Yeah. Yeah, because you can tell because of the way her hair is braided. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe I'll have you, uh, look at my map. Maybe you can suggest some things for me. I just, you know, again, I'm not going to reveal where any of the hidden stuff are. <laughs> he, he asked me yesterday when, when I showed him the preview. He's like, okay, so where's the Vault of Heaven? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not falling for that. <laughs> So, hypothetically speaking, if an ancient civilization was to leave all their cool stuff anywhere, where do you think would be the place that makes the most sense? <laughs> no, I, uh, I have to explain exactly what happened it was more along the lines of so that's where those mountains are right yes and where are we starting okay that's what we're starting okay now where's the vault of heaven <laughs> i'm making like the actual flow of the conversation to trick you into it <laughs> but yeah if you want to look over the map later i'll be in the other channel fair enough Well, I will think I will end the stream on that now. Yep. Cool world building things are happening. Indeed. <laughs>